Hi, everyone. My name is Benno Papari, and this is the Songwriters on Process podcast. Since 2010, I've interviewed over 300 songwriters about, well, their songwriting process. I don't care about favorite cities, tour stories, favorite foods, or anything like that. My goal has always been to treat songwriters the same way that we treat poets and more traditional prose writers. They are writers, plain and simple. In these interviews, we go deep into the specifics of the writing process. This is no, hey, do you start with lyrics or the music type of interview. Now, a little bit about me. I'm not a songwriter. In fact, I've never written a song in my life. I have a PhD in English language and literature, and I'm a former academic. So as a prose writer, I enjoy exploring how my process intersects with those of songwriters. This is an intelligent conversation about writing between two writers. And that, of course, means we talk a lot about books. The site features interviews across all genres, from metal to jazz, from country to that big category known as indie. You'll find a couple of A-list actors on the site and several members of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame as well. Now, I select songwriters to interview uh, who fit into one of two categories. One, do I listen to them already? And two, if I don't, would they make for a compelling and intelligent interview? You can find these interviews across all podcast platforms, as well as at songwritersonpodcast.com. Do you have an idea for an interview or a comment about the site? Hit me up at ben at songwritersonprocess.com. Thanks for listening and enjoy. And today's episode is with Clem Creevy of Cherry Glazer. Uh, Cherry Glazer's latest album, I Don't Want You Anymore, is out now on Secretly Canadian Records. I'm a big fan of Cherry Glazer and Clem Creevy. Um, one of those bands that whenever I hear them on the radio, I'm like, yeah, that's a good song. Again, another one. I just don't think I've ever heard a bad, you know, and I've listened to their albums, but I guess when that new music comes on, every song I heard, I loved. And this is a, um, I love the new album. Um, so we had a good time with this. Um, gosh, I mean, one of the things stood out to me when she said, um, I'm allergic to routine. I wake up and follow all my whims and desires, but inspiration strikes every couple of days. And when it does, you don't want to be around me because I have a one track mind. And she told this story about how she was on a date. Um, and at the end of the night, uh, they were in bed and she rolled over and started singing a beat into her phone and her date was like, you know, what are you doing? She's like, leave me alone. I'm, I'm, I'm creating, I've got a song idea. Um, but you know, when she's not in bed, uh, she likes a windowless room and prefers a messy ballpoint pen for her lyrics. The other thing that stood out to me was, you know, for most people, we find traffic to be maddening. I don't know how anyone can find traffic, much less LA traffic. I don't live in LA, but I've sat in traffic there before. Um, I don't know how anyone can find traffic to be zen, to be calming. Um, you know, it's anxiety producing. How can you get inspiration? You're supposed to get in, to get inspiration when when your mind is kind of clear of clutter. Not creepy. She says she loves to find inspiration when she's driving and in that horrible LA traffic. Um, the, I guess the more chaotic, the better. And she says, uh, I love that kind of energy when I'm, when I'm in a situation that seems scary and hard. Um, so a lot of interesting things I heard today, but, um, love this interview, big fan of the music again. Uh, I don't want you anymore out now on secretly Canadian records. Here is my interview with Clem Creevy of Cherry Glazer. All right, cool. Let's get started. So I always start by asking, uh, are you an everyday type of person when it comes to writing, uh, or creating or just kind of when the mood strikes? I'm definitely when a mood when the mood strikes kind of person. <laughs> um, I'm like allergic to routine. I know that that's not healthy, uh, but uh, I don't know. It's just I don't really function that way. Um, but I'm trying to. I know that it's good in the long run for your mental health to like do the same types of things every day and wake up every day at the same time. But I. I don't know. I feel like I I like to take advantage of the life I've chosen as an artist. And I just kind of wake up and let the, you know, whatever ha the world wants out of me. That's what I do. 
<laughs> whatever my brain needs and tells me to do. I follow all my whims and I'm totally hedonistic in that way. And I wake up late and <laughs> I just kind of like follow my desires. <laughs> um, but <laughs> I definitely have a, I have a huge fear of never, never being able to write again. Um, and then I surprise myself and end up writing music and can't stop because I'm a crazy person and I'm addicted to it. And um, I think the inspiration strikes every couple of days. Usually, usually every couple of days I'll be like, I need to play bass uh i have like a funky bass line rolling around in my brain and i need to run to the studio right now or i'll be like you know listening to some music that really inspires me and i'll be like okay if i don't if i don't lay down like a nasty you know, drum beat that I'm going to like rip off of YouTube and then like play guitar on top of it in the next 20 minutes. Like I'm going to go insane. So when the ins inspiration strikes, I think I get kind of like, un, un like you kind of don't even want to be around me because <laughs> I'm just like a one track mind. So I'm like, you know, I'm like on one. <laughs> so can you, does that, do, I mean, if you don't write for a couple of days because the inspiration hasn't struck, do you get, does that make you anxious at all? Like you said, you have a fear of not being able to write, but you know, if it's taking a couple of days, does that make you kind of nervous? No, because I've gotten over that fear a little bit recently. Like I used to just be like, Oh my God, I'm so scared that nothing is going to come out of me. Like, <clears throat> And then I consistently would surprise myself and keep, I would keep writing music. So I've learned, I've learned to trust myself a lot more. And uh, recently, um, like I, I, I used to have the fear. Um, well, I guess I still have the fear. <laughs> I say it like it's some sort of like, um, um, What's the word I'm looking for? Ubiquitous term, like the yeah. fear. <laughs> but um, I don't know. I think a lot of songwriters can probably relate to that feeling. Um, I d yeah, I, I just don't have a regular practice. I just don't think it, it, it matters because even if I do it, I don't always make stuff that I, I don't know. I just, I feel compelled to only create when I'm in the mood and that'll result in the best things and i i don't really see a point in, in um pushing myself because uh i guess that i i want to value my um you know um the the, the creation and and not just the you know con consistency of it or, or whatever yeah yeah so when you get inspired, are you, are these like marathon sessions? I mean, is it just like, you know, you lose track of time, you can't eat. Yeah. I mean, it's, yeah. What's that like for you? I hear I some people say that. Window I used to not have windows in my rehearsal space. Like I have a lockout at this building in downtown LA. Um, and I used to not have win a window room. And so I'd be in there and then like, I'd come out like hours later and it would be like nighttime and I'd be like, really? What? <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> yeah. And then <clears throat> recently I got a window room and I'm like a proud dad about it. Like with his boat, I'm like a dad with a boat about <laughs> my room. I'll be like, check out this window room. Like I'll be taking pictures of it all the time because it has like a really sick view of downtown and the suns when the sun sets, it's like really beautiful in there. I have these big windows, beautiful, like view of, of downtown. And, um, I'll, I'll like always be like snapping pictures, putting on all my close friends. And it's like, Clem, no one cares. <laughs> but I, I have heard like, songwriters tell me though, that they, uh, that windows, <laughs> 
uh gosh i mean bethany costantino i interviewed her a few times and she told me that i, I think she wrote, yeah i think she wrote one album i, f- uh, I forgot which one it was almost staring oh, out yeah. the window yeah oh, yeah um that was like their latest or maybe the one before their latest one i, yeah, I, I, I forgot that. yeah she has all these different uh, your process is different from each album but did you notice mm-hmm. a difference in the songwriting you know, writing you know in a windowless room versus a room with a window i could see that could maybe make a difference <laughs> um i think so i think so for sure uh being in the windowless room is yeah it disconnects you from like you know what what it disconnects you from reality um but maybe that's a good thing you know like but i do think there's a difference yeah yeah i definitely think there's a difference i don't know tonally what that is exactly i i do think i don't know maybe there's more of a groundedness to having windows whereas i think if you're in a windowless room you're just kind of like going down the rabbit hole but that's fucking cool too i mean i wrote rabbit hole uh in a windowless room so and that's one of my latest singles or came out two years ago now at this point but um you know you can be the judge that 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 yeah (laughs) that's definitely kind of like moody and dark and psycho and a lot of like in the box kind of synths and so maybe that was the windowless room vibe hmm you also mentioned when the mood strikes and uh you know i feel like there are varying opinions on that too some people say they can't write when they're happy because things are going great why do i need to write when things are great mm-hmm. other people say that you know you know being too low is also a hard place to write from so is there an ideal emotion or an ideal mood when you tend to be your most effective as a writer usually when i'm buzzing like when i'm excited usually um I get this like sort of buzz that goes off in my brain um, and I get like hyped, like I get like hyper and um, but no, there's, there's not like, I, I, I understand the too happy, too low thing. I think I agree with that. Um, But there's no specific emotion that I need to already be it. And like the, the inspiration strikes at like random, totally random times. It's a lot of the times it's when I'm feeling relaxed or I'm in good company, but it's often when I'm like, I don't know. It's such a, it's, a, it's actually a hard question to answer. Like yeah. it comes really randomly. Um, yeah. I don't think that there's any um, like specific um, emotion that I that I'm usually already in. Um, sort of contemplative, I guess. I think that's when I'm often like, that's when things kind of come out. Um, and that is why I do need a lot of alone time, I think, um, because without it, like, I can never really get to that place of contemplation mm-hmm. and, and sort of uh, stillness. So I think it does, it is often sort of born out of that. I think a lot of times, uh, but sometimes I'll be hanging out with friends where I'll be like drinking at the bar and then I'll be like I'll be like dude like oh my god like if only like I was in this studio right now like I just like came up with like the coolest idea for a song and then I'll I'll be like singing into my phone in the corner and like uh you know just like completely involved in some idea that I have to go execute <laughs> i love those uh, stories i mean uh you know the, 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 like you're in a you're in a place that's not conducive <laughs> to songwriting and that's when the best ideas yeah. seem to happen right yeah totally um i remember one time being on having like i was i was 
I was on a date and I was at this man's house and um I'll, I'll just cut to the chase. We we were falling asleep and um I like turned over and I was like <laughs> But I'm like singing into my phone and he was like, yo, are you okay? Yo, are you okay? And I was like, I was like, yeah, no, I'm good. I'm so sorry. But it was like some like psycho, like that's hilarious. Like very funky, like way too funky for the moment. I don't know the beat. <laughs> right. <laughs> I remember that being a thing. I haven't kind of recently. I, well, I you also mentioned bass lines. Um, and I'm curious how often, you know, I hate to tell stories about songwriters all the time, but I remember Britt Daniel from Spoon. I talked, interviewed him a couple of years oh, ago. Nice. And he told me, he told me that he sits, check this out. So <laughs> he'll sit, he'll sit at the bar with his laptop and just listen to people and he'll write down in his laptop phrases or words or lines he hears people say. And I can just imagine <laughs> walking to seeing him in a, you know, in a bar thinking <laughs> he's listening up, you know? So when you're at those bars or any of those places um, and you mentioned bass lines also, so I'm curious, I mean, that's music obviously, but so music he brings his laptop to the bar. Yes. And it's like at a, at a bar, like at night. He'll sit, well, I'm not sure the time of day, but he was pretty clear that it was, okay. it was, yeah, it was, he will sit and with his laptop open and listen and just listen for things. I love that sort of unhinged, that's unhinged behavior, Brit. I'm just going to say that. <laughs> but I mean, but, but I do hear a lot of songwriters tell me that they get. He toured with them, so he knows me, so I can say uh, that. Gotcha. Okay. So, so I can keep that part in. Um, <laughs> yeah, but a lot of know. A lot of songwriters tell me, though, that they get ideas, you know, how many ideas they get from just offhand conversations that they hear random lines. So, yeah, that's how I came up with the name of my album, actually. Um, I had a few ideas like rolling around. And then I was um, in the car driving like late at night. And there was some like crazy, like 60s kind of rock song playing uh or like kind of like a blues rock like jam i had never heard it before but it was really rad um and um and the guy just goes i don't want you anymore and i was like damn that's so cool like that's that hits that really hits and then it was just a line that he was like in the chorus of some like you know crazy like 50s doo-wop song and i was like i i gotta take that like that's genius <laughs> yeah just um, that line and that yeah that's weird though because that's not a that's not a line that's unique right it's not something you got no it's not like a line that's you know it seems like that's a line every one of us has said before no yeah it's just something that hit and felt really like emotional and simple but yeah. i think that a lot of my I think that's how you can describe a lot of like what my thing is is like simple but effective maybe yeah um so another thing that uh, songwriters tell me that they get a lot of ideas now we started this conversation you were sitting on the floor I think a lot of songwriters tell me that they like to actually write on the floor rather than sitting in a chair <laughs> yeah i like to stand actually a lot oh really okay i mean i've heard that too yeah like when i get really into it and i'm recording i'm usually kind of hunched over at my desk but standing and then coming up with stuff like that but i write a lot of songs on bass um I like start with bass for a lot of songs for some reason. I just think it's such a great fun instrument to like play around with. And I think, I guess naturally it happens that way. Um, you mentioned those bass lines too, but I'm curious, if, are there times when you've gotten great bass lines or you, you know, those funky bass lines from some 
random sound that you hear when you're out and about? The other day I was, I pulled up to downtown rehearsal. This isn't a baseline specifically, but um, I pulled up to downtown rehearsal, which is the studio in downtown where my uh, studio lockout is. And I was sitting in my car and some band was playing and they sounded sick but then the car next to me had like a it was like a conversation that was going on in the car in the car like through the car phone so it was like the car phone conversation mixed with the band playing on the second floor was like the coolest atmospheric sound to me and I sat in my car recording and I really didn't want the guy to see that I was recording because I was like, you like, I'm not trying to record your conversation, but I was trying really hard because I was sitting next to him and he could have, could have clearly like seen my phone, but I was trying really hard to be like chill about it. But I was also trying to get a good sound. So I was like holding it up in weird ways, <laughs> trying to record him. <laughs> what was so appealing? Because to me, I would think, wow, I'm trying to listen to this band but this guy won't stop talking. So I love, maybe that's where you're an artist and I'm not, but. It's the sound quality. It's the vibe. It's yeah. The sound quality, the vibes. It's, it's not specifically um, any like notes or words. It's yeah. just the atmosphere had a really nice quality to it. And um, yeah, that's what that was. Yeah. Do you, do you, do you get a lot of ideas also? when you're in the car specifically driving that tends to be a popular source of inspiration absolutely i also think that's a car city thing like that's an la thing i think a lot is coming up with ideas in the car because you're sitting in traffic and you're driving so much I, i've had people tell me that i reference driving so much in my music that it feels like very specifically LA <laughs> because of that. As I'm thinking about this now, I could see the difference between, I wonder if the ideas that you get, let's say if you're driving in a long expanse where, I mean, in traffic, you're a stop and go, you got to pay attention to what's around you. You know, I, I do find that when people get those ideas for songs, it's because driving allows them to kind of, when you're driving on a long expanse, you're, you know, your mind kind of tunes out. Um, so that's interesting. What you're telling me is that you're getting ideas when you really have to be paying attention to what you're doing when you're driving in LA traffic, right? You can't like just kind of space out and zone out and kind of think about songs or you don't, does that make sense? Yeah, totally. I mean, I think I tap into a certain zen when i'm in the, when i'm driving though i think that may, most people would be afraid are afraid of la traffic and it's totally understandable but I, I definitely tap into a certain type of zen having like grown up here and learn how to drive here i remember when i was like 15 and i was learning how to drive my driving instructor took me straight to downtown la <laughs> took me straight to like skid row and i was learning how to drive there and um, he was like, don't hit the people running in the street. And I was like, oh, my God. Um, OK. Um, <laughs> and it was like really, really scary. <laughs> um, and he just like threw me into it. But I, I love that kind of energy when someone just like puts me in this situation that seems scary and hard. <laughs> and that's when I, you get ideas during those situations i basically owe my whole life to my driving instructor when i was 15 <laughs> <laughs> i i do hear yeah I, 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 I also hear walking you know kind of not not in a you know there's the self whatever uh what i'm looking for self-propelling is not the word but you know walking biking running st things like that yeah that's the other thing i was gonna say is i like the feeling of being alone but being in movements and like i like uh, i get so much inspiration from living in a city as well so i like the combination of those three things like the city actually sort of zends me i like feeling a part of the energy of it 
this is something that it's, it's I'm realizing as you're saying this, because I would feel like I can't create in those situations, but you're so used to them. Like anyone else might say the chaos is not a place for contemplation. It's not a place for Zen. It's a place where you can't get anything done because you're so distracted. But I, I love the fact that you're so used to that, that that is your place of Zen when most people yeah. would say, how is that Zen? You can't even listen to yourself think, but <laughs> like, I'm curious if you could feel that way. Let's say if you were in the chaos of like New York, do you think you'd be in that state of Zen or is it, does, is it LA specifically because you're used to it where you feel That's like, question. yeah, I think I like New York too, for that reason. I love I love big cities. I like London too. I like, I, 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 I feel a sense of peace in the city. Um, I like being in a place that's multicultural and that has everyone doing what they want. Um, I mean, obviously that's a stretch. Not everyone's able to do what they want. <laughs> um, Especially these days with yeah. the coffee and the shitter and like, you know, it's hard to to survive out here these days. But um, yeah, something is comforting to me and inspiring to me about people moving around me. Yeah, yeah. that's so like, interesting. Um, <laughs> yeah, but I also I, I, mean, I like being out. I do a lot of like hiking and backpacking. Like I actually just came back last night from a three day from being up in the mountains for three days. So I really love being like I was in Yosemite surrounded by like breathtaking beauty and like just me and my two friends. Um, and I was up in the mountains. And yeah, I wasn't feeling particularly creative, like in that way. I mean, that's a place for me to soul search. And I think that's what I need to like get out. But that's not that that's not always the most conducive or inspiring place for me to create music. That's just more me figuring out my life. <laughs> it's a recharge, some a recharge for you so that when you come back. Yeah. So exactly. I, I'm guessing then if I if, if someone stuck you in a cabin in upstate New York to write for a week in the woods, you may not be as effective. <laughs> yeah, I don't really know if I would. I don't really know if I would. I, I think I'm better suited for making making albums in cities, honestly. Yeah. Um, speaking of lyrics, I always ask this question when you write lyrics, are you a pen and paper person or a computer person or a phone person? I like pen and paper. You do. Sure. Let's talk. I, do, yeah. I find songwriters <laughs> are very loyal to types of pen, color, of ink, paper, very yeah. particular about it. So let's hear it. I have my, uh, crazy little notebook and, um, it's really dark, so you wouldn't want to like flip through it. But I, I love to. I I have to write with a pen. I have to write like with a pen on paper. And sometimes I like writing on copy paper, like not lined paper. That's kind of like my favorite oh. way to write lyrics. Um, Why is that? Is copy paper with pen. Yeah. I don't know. I guess there's more freedom to like move around and write things in weird ways. <laughs> and the line, there's, I feel like the lines, they bound me, man. No, just kidding. But yeah, I've heard little... that though. <laughs> yeah. Um... <laughs> That's interesting. Yeah. I, 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 um, I love like that you know so much about other people's processes because I find that interesting on a personal note. I feel like we don't often talk about it with each yeah. other. <laughs> well, I love the answers that I get. I mean, I mentioned I interviewed Jerry Harrison of the Talking Heads and he told me he has to write uh, with felt tip pen. I never heard felt tip pen and I said, why <laughs> felt tip? But he has a Ooh. visual arts background. Yeah, he has a visual <laughs> arts background and he says he loves the feeling of the scraping of the pen <laughs> on the paper. And I thought that's amazing. Like the feeling of the scraping. Um, I like a ballpoint pen that flows. That's real inky that gets all over your hands. <laughs> 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 uh, 
I like I do I do I honestly do I like a like a messy ballpoint pen that I can just kind of like scribble with and just inking everywhere (laughs) and I think the advantage means you joked about being bound by the lines but I think I I hear that a lot uh Mm -hmm. you know because online paper allows you to be non-linear uh it allows you to kind of write things all over the place you know arrows thought maybe stuff so I think it's a more it's a different process certainly because you don't i it, what you yeah. joked but i think that's absolutely true that i think yeah, you're yeah. Pro, right totally totally now there's something to the quality of like just being able to yeah etch crazy things in and 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 just feel like the words themselves uh can flow yeah um do you revise a lot of your lyrics I do, yeah. Um, sometimes I don't. Like one of the uh, uh, one of the songs on my latest album, it's called "Touch Touched You with My Chaos," and um, that I wrote uh, kind of all in one sitting and didn't change any words. So that was one that like absolutely like flew out of me um, because of the chord structure, the nature of the chord structure was like just really hitting emotionally for me. And was like kind of simple and really heavy. And at the time I was um, going through something where I was kind of hooking up with an old, old friend of mine. Like he and I had been friends in like high school and then we'd like reconnected later and like we were sort of hooking up, but it was like casual. And um I don't know. I was feeling kind of crazy about it. Uh, Cause I was like, Oh, is it like, I know you so well. <laughs> like I remember when you had braces, <laughs> but now we're both adults and it's like really weird. Um, and I had just watched the movie Kajillionaire and like the soundtrack to that was really cool. So I just remember like, oh, no, actually, I had just watched Mysterious Skin as this Greg Araki movie. Um, I get inspired by movies a lot. I'm kind of like a movie head. So a lot of like movie feeling, like the feeling of them and like the soundtracks can sometimes push me to write. But um, I just watched that movie and it was so like dark and moody and cool. Um and I just, I got into this like lyrical headspace when I was writing it <laughs> and then like, ran to my desk and, and wrote all of the lyrics down. Just like, they were just like pouring out of me and I never really changed them. I thought they were perfect. So two yeah. follow-ups. One, I hear occasionally people, songwriters sometimes tell me they're less likely to trust lyrics that come out so quickly they feel like that (laughs) there's unease that oh if they happen that fast how good can they really be um but (laughs) does that do you ever have that anxiety like wow this almost seemed too easy no okay no i think the opposite i think if they're flowing out you need to trust that because why else would they be flowing out if you didn't have some sort of real raw a raw emotion that you were tapping into yeah and that's what i'm always trying to capture is like that uh truth that yeah. like realness and um i don't know i always have a lot of anxiety and things like stopping me in my real life that when I'm in like that sort of flow state, I'm really grateful for it. Mm-hmm. And I always, I know that's like where I'm the most creative and the most like honest. Now the soundtracks. <laughs> yeah. uh, so if I played you the soundtrack without the movie, would that inspire you? Do you is it the combination of the movie and the soundtrack that gets you that gets you inspired? It's the combination because it's not always just the music. It's like the vibe of the movie that I feel afterwards. So it's definitely the movie itself as well. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Um, I want to read you a quote. I like reading quotes by authors to, and see how songwriters react to them. So this is one 
by William Burroughs. And he says, um, there is only one thing a writer can write about, and that is what is in front of his senses at the moment of writing. So I'll repeat that. That's William Burroughs. He said, there's only one thing a writer can write about. That is what is in front of his senses at the moment of writing. Um, so do you, it, it, can you write about things with distance or do you need to be in the moment to be able to write about those things effectively? Does that make sense? Um, yeah, that makes sense. It's a great, that's a great quote. I think that kind of echoes what I was just saying about the best stuff coming from your most honest and yeah. sort of vulnerable state. Um, so I, I agree. I, I, I think, I guess I think the emotional aspect is the most important thing to me with music or at least with my music. And, um, and so, yeah, I, I think I need to be sort of existing in that emotion and living in that emotion. Um, that's when my best stuff always comes out is yeah. from that place. Yeah. I, yeah. I mean, I agree. I don't think you can really write things from, 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 from distance. Yeah. Like, oh, at least for me personally, uh, all of, I think the best stuff that, that I do, um, you know, is because like something fucking crazy just happened to me. Um, and so I'm feeling a type of way about it. And so that's what I'm writing about. So speaking but, of, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Uh, no, just like, I guess on the flip side, I think, I think that when you write like that, things are very emotional and very like heavy, but is that necessarily always good? I, I don't know. I mean, right. is that necessarily like, oh, is what makes the best music? Like for me, that's a place that I love to get to and that I love to create from, but it'd be interesting to, to like think about, um, what it's like if you're coming from a more analytical space or whatever. Yeah. All right. One more quote. This is the one that songwriters love. This is the favorite. Uh, so this is from E.L. Doctorow, the novelist. He says, writing is like driving at night in the fog. You can only see as far as the headlights, but you can make the whole trip that way. So <laughs> Uh, I love that quote. I'm going to read it out loud. Uh, again, <laughs> E.L. Doctorow, writing is like driving at night in the fog. You can only see as far as the headlights, but you can make the whole trip that way. So I'm a prose writer. I'm not a songwriter, but I do feel like I have no right knowing what it's supposed to look like when I finish. Um, I think the biggest, for, I mean, this is how I feel. I'm not saying it's for everyone, but for me, I think if I, when I start, if I know where I'm going to end up, that's too restrictive. Um, oh, definitely. So, as a songwriter, how does that? How do you relate? Does does that resonate with you? Just do you feel like you need to have that unpredictability and not know what the not know what it's going to look like in the end? Um, I think that's a lot like the what we were saying before a little bit um, about like running with the emotion that you're feeling at the time yeah uh, and i think that is like the essence of the song you're not always coming up with some you know plot line with the twist at the end you know you're you're um you're capturing a feeling um or a mood um and and so, yeah, you, 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 you don't, you don't really need those like dips and plot lines and creations that go into other t forms of storytelling. Um, like, I don't think it's relevant. So yeah, I, I love that quote. I, I yeah. love that. It, it reminds me of like, being like on that feeling of buzzing that I was saying earlier, where you're just like, you, 
you like open your eyes and it's like done like it's written because like you're just acting on some sort of like buzz <laughs> yeah and with what you're saying earlier i don't like from what you were telling me i don't see how when you get in those moments of inspiration i don't see how you would it seems like it's so frantic i don't know how you necessarily you would know what it's supposed to look like it's just i just have to start <laughs> writing um all right yeah. la last question so I find that songwriters for the most part are our voracious readers. Uh, so how much do you get to read? Uh, and if you do, who are some of your favorite authors, genres, stuff like that? Um, I used to be a big reader when I was a kid. Like I really like um, Kurt Vonnegut and stuff. <laughs> who doesn't? Yeah, who doesn't? Who doesn't? Um, right now, I'm reading something that's just kind of for fun. It's not really strenuous at all, but uh, it's like about this girl who's on vacation with her dad in France, and he's like a big player. And she is like 18 at the time. And it's kind of about all of her emotions. And I guess the writer was like, she was like 18 when she wrote it. It's from the 60s. Yeah. Um, what's it called? I feel like that was made into a movie. I remember what it's called. I'm done with it, though. But it's uh, I'll I'll find it and I'll tell you. It's like a, it's from the 60s. And it's like a French book. Yes. Um, like, I don't know, like. Francois Jouard or something. It's a like, French name. This is my crazy notebook, though. It has Chucky on it. I don't know why. It's scary. <laughs> um, yeah, I can't remember the name. It's some French name. I yeah. think it translates to like kisses and yeah. kisses and kisses. <laughs> um, my bass player is like the smartest person ever, and she doesn't read. She's always like, I don't read. <laughs> But she's also like a genius. <laughs> so I love that. I always think it's really funny. Um, but I think it helps me with like, sometimes I have like a desperate need to read. Mm. Like I'm just like, this is the only thing that I want to do. Like I just need to be like sucked into a novel. I think I like novels more than anything, like any other type of book. And that's it for today's episode. Check back in a couple of weeks for a new episode. I do try to post these every two weeks, uh, sometimes with more frequency, sometimes with less. A lot of that depends on my work commitments, my family commitments, and also when artists can talk to me. It's not easy to get these interviews. Speaking of interviews, did you know this is a relatively new podcast? Uh, I only started podcasting about a year ago. Uh, well, depending on when you're listening to this, I should say 2022, but from 2010 to 2022, uh, all of my interviews were transcribed and they are all there archived for you to go down that deep rabbit hole. So if you go to songwritersonpodcast.com and click on from the archives in the top, at the top, you'll see all of those transcribed interviews. I think there's over 200. Uh, so go down that rabbit hole. There's a lot of great interviews there. Um, but, uh, you'll find all of those there again, the podcast itself is relatively recent. So there's a lot, a lot of reading you need to be catching up on with those old interviews. Speaking of interviews, uh, if you have suggestions for interview subjects or want to comment or complain, anything like that, email me at ben at songwriters on process.com. That's ben at ben at songwriters on process.com. And that's it for today's episode. This wraps it up. Thank you very much for listening and have a good one.